leaders. Mr. Speaker, I move that the motion be amended by replacing all the words following that with the following words. A referendum be held at the time of the next general election to decide whether the Marriage Act 1955 should be amended to recognise marriage between two people regardless of their sex, sexual orientation or gender identity. End of quotes. Uh, yeah, well, um, the member should, if he's going to speak, continue to speak, and I would ask that I can have a written copy of the amendment, please. So just continue. Mr Speaker, uh, this is clearly about many issues and many beliefs, and you've heard them tonight and for many years and over the last few months in particular. But it also is about the right of the people of this country to be heard the right of New Zealanders to all have their say and to evince their equality with anyone who sits in this parliament. New Zealand has a proud tradition of democracy. It's in our cultural DNA. We're one of only nine countries that can claim an unbroken line of democracy. That's elections on a regular term for the last one and a half centuries. We are a seriously unique country in that context and the democratic traditions of New Zealand is part of who we are as a nation. And tonight, for reasons that members may best understand themselves, that tradition is again under threat. We stand on the verge of passing legislation which would radically change the institution of marriage. No one in tonight's debate would surely watching television or being here tonight dispute that. We stand on the verge of passing legislation which would radically change the institution of marriage and my party is not here to argue the merits of that. But we are going to go about it without any democratic mandate at all. Who here in the last campaign said we were going to do this? Who here in the last campaign? <laughs> yes. Oh, we did. Is that true? Well, I don't recall the advertisements. I don't recall the hoardings. I don't recall the powered boasts when it was thought that votes would be forfeit. So we can make that frivolous statement, but tonight I'm asking you this. Why do you think that your knowledge of this country is more preferable to the mass majority of adult New Zealanders? Answer that question. Do you still feel that you have a superior entitlement to the ordinary people of this country who, after all, we are meant to serve and not become the directors of? We are doing it without any democratic mandate at all. Have no doubt about this, that New Zealand people have been denied the chance to vote on one of the most polarising of issues of our age. This is, this is not to argue the merits of each side. The proponents of Ms Wall's bill point to the select committee process as being some sort of vindication. Well, if that's true, is that a mandate? If that's true, is it good enough? If that's true, why don't you trust your fellow New Zealanders? What is it about the New Zealand people who you foreswore to serve all your parliamentary days that you don't trust and think that you have a superior knowledge of? If the Select Committee submissions reveal anything, is that the public opinion of this country is widely split. We all accept that. But where is the majority in our country? Where is the mandate? This may seem tiresome. But just yesterday we were talking about the need to ask the country about asset sales and we all know that there's a massive majority of New Zealanders, despite our politics, against the sale of assets. How can something be meritorious yesterday and 48 hours not be meritorious? Answer that question. Such a major legislative change must be based on the collective will of New Zealanders not 121 temporarily empowered MPs. Most of these people are going to be gone tomorrow. We all know that. 
So why would you not repose the trust in the voters of this country against the people who sit here? It's called democracy, for goodness sake. If New Zealand is going to have a proper debate, or oh, someone just said to me, go and get the signatures. Are ready? Well, why not do what Washington and other great people in history have done? Why not ask the people? What is so wrong with that? I mean, what can be, what can be wrong if you have the overwhelming majority of four million New Zealanders expressed by their adults in a referendum? Where's the sin here? And actually reposing the trust in the people of this country. We are calling for a referendum on this issue to give all New Zealanders the same say as these people here tonight. Why not? What could possibly be wrong or unprincipled or unfair and letting the people of New Zealand decide this issue for themselves? And knowing then, and knowing then, whichever side of the argument we end up on, that the public have decided, and therefore, because we believe in democracy, we must live with their choice. What could be so wrong with that? In the past, so often, and there are people in the gallery tonight, watching TV tonight, and in this house, who know that there's been an enormous fundamental disconnect between politicians and voters. We've seen and endured this on occasion after occasion after occasion, particularly over the last 30 years. No one could dispute that tonight. And on so many occasions, we've seen politicians blatantly lie about their intentions. And there cannot be anyone who's watching tonight's debate who doesn't understand that. You know, tonight we're actually seeing it in this sense. There's a recurring theme here, and we wonder why a million people didn't vote at the last election who were entitled to. One million New Zealanders in a country that used to be pride itself, that even though the vote was voluntary, we used to outperform Australia where the vote was compulsory. That was a recent boast, but a million never turned out the last election, and I can see, and I'm sure some of you see, why that is. They think that their voice doesn't matter. And echoing out of this house tonight and reverberating the country all around New Zealand is an expression saying, you don't matter. You don't count. You're just Joe Bloggs out in suburbs somewhere else or in some black block place. When in fact, this should be an empowering, empowering expression from New Zealand. There is nothing New Zealanders hate more than politicians who think they know best. <laughs> there is nothing more odious, more loathsome than politicians who think they know best. And this debate, sadly, and I'm not doubting the integrity of any side of this debate, but it shows in a terrible indifference in 2013, when all of our expressions are about transparency, openness, and taking the people with us an absolute apathy and indifference to democracy. It betrays the feeling of moral and intellectual superiority that some people in this chamber hold. And my challenge to you up there right now and around this country is, do you think these people are better able to judge this issue than you? Oh, no, you don't. Oh, no, you don't. Because there's no one who believes in democracy that doesn't want to have the decision shared with their family, their friends, their community, and indeed their nation, with them themselves. I think the people of, of this country tonight are being grievously let down because there's an enormous sense of haste here and argument here, but there's also the feeling that we again will take the people for granted. My party proposed a referendum. My party says that we believe the people of this country are better able to decide this issue than anybody else. And if you don't trust the people, pray tell me, who are you going to trust now? Mr. Kevin Haig. Why, thank you, Mr. Speaker.